Welcome to the Hawthorne Studio. My name is Jessica and today we are actually going to be trying a brand new wax that I just got in. Well, I wouldn't say just got in. It's kind of been sitting in my closet for months, but I am just now taking it out. Um, it is called C55 and this is a coconut based tart wax that I really wanted to try out. I have no idea how I'm going to cut this because this seems really, really difficult. And I am going to be making wax brittle or bark. And I have this little silicone tray that's usually used for resin. I would normally use just like a cookie sheet, but I don't have any um, clean ones that I want to get wax on. So I'm just going to use this for right now until I can get one dedicated for it. But I basically want to offer wax melts in my line. I just haven't gotten around to testing out this particular wax. I normally use TW30, if you've ever heard of that wax. It's a 100% soy wax, and honestly, I really like it. I put in like 15% fragrance load and we're good to go. The problem with that wax is that it is literally always sold out. It is so hard for me to get my hands on it. So I'm gonna be trying out the C55, which is predominantly coconut, and it does have some food grade paraffin in it. So I'm hoping the paraffin will you know, let it have a really good hot throw, but I thought it would fit my line really well since I'm using coconut apricot as my wax. So the plan is we are going to do a spring wildflower blend of Wooden Wood Co. fragrances. And I have bramble berry dried flowers right here. I have pink petals, cornflower petals, red rose petals, marigold, I have a jasmine, and we are going to turn it into this pretty like berry theme blend over the wax brittle because it's not hawthorn unless it has flowers somewhere on it. So this is what we're going to be doing today. I have never used this wax before, so we're going to give this a shot. I think I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna treat it like coconut wax. I'm just gonna heat it up to like 190 or 200 degrees as high as I can get it basically on the double boiler. And then from there, we are going to add in 12% fragrance load. I have been seeing so many mixed reviews on what percentage to use. Everyone's like 8%, 9%, 10%, 12%, 15%. And I'm like, well, the website says it handles to 10%, but you know, I'm just gonna try 12 and see what happens. We'll, we'll see, we'll see. Um, and I'm gonna let this cure. I'm probably gonna have little extras into these little tiny discs. They're super small. One of these little discs will fit a wax warmer just fine. And I'm going to be using those to test out. Another issue is that I have no idea how much wax this holds and I don't wanna do the water test because I don't wanna to have to clean it off after. So I'm gonna just make a pound and go from there. All right, let me go ahead and give you a close-up shot of this wax real quick and see how white and also how difficult it is to cut. Okay, so here is the C55 and it just came in this white paper. And this is from Northwood Candle Supply. So I'm gonna wear gloves for this because I really hate getting wax on my hands. And we're just gonna try cutting it with a kitchen knife at first and hope for the best. Oh my gosh. So let's take a first look. I haven't even opened this yet, so I don't even know what it looks like. Okay, so it pretty much looks like cocoa apricot. First impression is that it's very white. Comparison, but not like pure white, like cocoa bright 11 but no less weight than cocoa apricot if you've used that wax before. So let's go ahead and try to give this a quick cut and see what happens. Oh Lord. Okay, so this isn't gonna work. Oh my gosh, new plan. I don't know why I keep doing this to myself. Every time I'm on a video, I'm like, let's try cutting the wax on camera. And holy mother of God. Okay, new plan. I'm gonna bag this up and smash it on the floor. Be right back. 
and we're back. Okay, you all think I'm playing, but I literally just threw it into a clean bag and just smashed it on the floor. If I had a hammer ready, I probably would have just used the hammer instead, but I don't have one right now. So the floor's hard, that'll work. Okay, so we're gonna make one pound of this. We're gonna use 12%. And I'll have to grab a calculator for that because I can't use that. I can't think of that on the top of my head. One pound is equal to 16 ounces. And we are at 15 right now. So I just need a little bit more. Got this. Ironically, now that it's broken up, it's a lot easier to cut too. And it was not just a minute ago. Oh my gosh, we're at exactly one pound. This is perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on the double boiler and we're gonna heat it up to 200 degrees, I think. And I'm going to measure my fragrance oil and I will have to get that number in a second. I'm actually recording on my phone, so I don't have that number on me, but I will come back with 12%, one second. Okay, so that is 1.92 ounces of fragrance oil. Since I am using three different oils for this blend, um, one of them is going to be wildflowers and sea air to kind of get this uh, very fairy garden theme going on that I have for this wax melt. It's gonna be part of my summer collection and spring collection. I'm just gonna divide all, both, all three of these by three and just do equal parts because that's easy and it smells wonderful. So we want easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure out this fragrance oil, get this heated up to 200 degrees and we will come back for the pour and to kind of do a little decoration on it and see what the end result looks like. We are at 199, close enough. So we're gonna go ahead and take this off because it has been at 199 for a while now. I don't think it's gonna get any higher on the double boiler. I'm just gonna go ahead and add in my fragrance oil. And since we are going to go ahead and stir, um, how long? Your guess is as good as mine. I'm gonna go for, how about 30, 45 seconds to a minute, maybe two minutes? Let's go for a minute and a half. We'll go somewhere in between. But thank you so much for everyone who showed up for the live the other day with Wood & Wicko. That was a lot of fun. I think I had way too much wine though, but it was still a lot of fun. Hopefully I wasn't the only one drinking at that point. <laughs> um, but I'm really, really hoping that this wax turns out well for these wax melts because TW30, TW30, and you get TW30 from California Candle Supply. This one you get from Northwood. It was a really good heart wax, but like I said, it was really hard to find. So that's really not sustainable. And this one seems to always be in stock. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. And I don't know if it's because, I mean, a lot of people said they love it. So it doesn't hurt to try. I only bought like five to 10 pounds worth. I didn't buy a lot. So if it doesn't work, well, then I have wax melts for myself at home. And I believe you can get this from another vendor as well. Um, it's a new vendor. I don't remember the name, maybe like Porter Candle Supply on Etsy. I'll try to find the link and drop it down below for you. Um, that way you have more than one option. And I think we're almost done stirring. This actually might be just enough or too much. We'll see in a minute. And just another quick update while I'm stirring because this is just time to talk at this point. Um, the T, no, I'm not, not TW. The blend that I did, the 487 with the Cocoa Apricot, I just burned a candle down from start to finish and it did really well all the way down, except there was this one weird thing that happened and the wick didn't self extinguish itself and normally that is what happened. So I am burning a tester right now with a higher fragrance load. I had 9% last time, but I did 11% this time. And I've only had it curing for like four days and it is so strong. <laughs> it, it actually might be too strong, but my theory is if I add in 
more fragrance oil it's gonna drown the wick a little bit more maybe it will self extinguish itself later down the line right now it has a beautiful burn so i'm not too worried about it all right let's go ahead and pour this into the mold into this little square mold perfectly. If you want to know where I um, got this mold from, I can drop it down in the description box, but it's just a resin mold for, um, oh, it's a resin tray mold, and I thought that was super cool. But I think for productivity and a larger batch, I'm probably gonna have to go use a cookie sheet instead, one with a little tiny raised edge, and do it that way. But I will wait for this to cool probably a little bit more before dropping in the flowers. Um, probably another minute or so, and then I'll drop in the flowers and we'll see what it looks like without a heat gun. And then if it doesn't look that great on the top, I'm gonna hit it with a heat gun and see what it looks like from there. So I will be right back in a few minutes to decorate the top. We're gonna add a little pizzazz by adding in some mica. Okay, so it is finally done. I'm going to basically take this out of the mold and break it apart and see how this wax does as a wax brittle. I'm not 100% sure if I like it for this purpose, but let me just give a close up real quick. And so you can hear the crack. today. Now the wax brittle, if you don't know what that even is, you basically create like these little tiny, well I guess they're more like chunks of wax that you can just snap off and put into your wax warmer as you want to. And they're just like just cute little versions of wax melt. As for packaging, Packaging will probably have to be something like a bag or something along those lines, but basically That's it for this now my opinions of it thus far I want to show you the back of it because I don't have any flowers on the back so you can hopefully See that But it is very smooth very white so it actually came out really pretty um, this took a really long time to dry. I actually got tired of waiting. Um, it was really weird. Like it set fast, but it wasn't setting fast enough for me to actually break apart like wax brittle should. So what I ended up doing instead was throwing it in the freezer. <laughs> I don't know if that ruined it or not. I don't think so, but it already has a really nice cold throw. It smells really good. Um, I'm gonna wait about a week to put these in the wax warmer to test out to see if I like the hot throw or not. Um, but thus far, I think it turned out really cute. I'm probably gonna insert pictures of them at the end and probably post them on my Instagram as well. Uh, and, oh, one last thing. We did hit 
one, uh, 2,000 subscribers, so yay, happy 2,000 subs. So I did say we would do a giveaway at 2,000. I didn't know it would be so soon. I put a poll on my Instagram what you guys would want to see as a giveaway, and one of them was photography shots done by me, um, about 20 photos or so. Another option was five pounds of a variety pack of luxury waxes for you to try out. And then the last one was a luxury candle making kit. Um, thus far, it was the most, the most votes got the photography done by me. And if you don't know what my pictures look like, I can insert some at the end so you can get an idea. You can also check out my Instagram at Hawthorne Company. I have a lot of pictures on there. I did just get a new professional camera, so I'm super excited about that. It's probably why I wanted the pictures to win so I could just play with them a little bit. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. What would you want to see as a giveaway? Because I really don't know what to pick. And one last update on the Digi Boil. <sighs> oh boy. <laughs> so the Digi Boil that I did on my last video, that one ended up actually not working. Not that it didn't melt wax, it just didn't turn on at all. It was like completely broken. And that made me super upset. So I ended up contacting the supplier. We're gonna do a return and an exchange. And hopefully round two is going to give me better results. Um, but that kind of sucked because I really wanted to do like a very thorough like side-by-side -side comparison and review video on it. Not a very good first impression, but things happen. It probably got banged around on the delivery truck and knocked some wires loose or something crazy like that. So I really don't hold it against the actual product itself. Um, I'm really excited to try it when I can actually try it, but I am super looking forward to that. Other than that, I will see you next time. And if you are looking for any particular DIYs, let me know. I have a few planned already, but you know, whatever you guys want. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, notification bell, and you can follow my Instagram at Hawthorne Company. My website is also hawthornecompany.com. And thank you so much for watching. Bye loves.